today's lesson, we're still talking about how to calculate finance charges for our credit accounts or our credit cards. Now, in yesterday's lesson, we simply took the percent of what was left over or what was unpaid from the previous month previous month and that was our finance charge and we added it to the new month. Now not all charge some charge accounts do it that way. Most credit cards however are going to do it using the average daily balance method. So what they're actually going to do is they're going to break down the month and figure out what your balance is per day and find the find the interest in your finance charges based off of what you owe for that time period. Okay, so our average daily balance method is computing the finance charges on a credit account based on the average balance at the end of the period. All right, so here's our formula. So what we have to do is figure out what our sum of daily balances is and for what time period and then we'll divide it by the number of days it holds that balance. The next step is to calculate the finance charge in the new balance. Now this will look just like our yesterday's formula. The finance charge, instead of this being the unpaid balance, this is going to be the average daily balance times the periodic rate. Then to calculate our new balance, we're going to take what was left over from last month add in our finance charge that we just calculated and add in any new purchases for the month. So some of this is going to feel very familiar. Now for our first example I made a table so that it would be easier for you to keep track of everything. So what's happening here from, from December 1st to December 10th we have an end of the day balance of $175.65. All right, now what we're going to do is calculate that per day. So we have to calculate how many days are within this time period. Now I'll be care remind you to be careful about just subtracting this. If I subtract this 10 minus 1, it's going to look like it's 9 days, but we actually have to count that first day. So add that back in and make that 10 days. So for 10 days, our balance was $175.65 for each day. So we're going to multiply that by 10, and we're going to say that we held a balance of $1,756.50. Now, we're going to average that all together at the end, so we'll hold still with that. All right, so then we made a purchase. $57.89. So now that means that our end of the day balance is no longer 175. We need to add in 57.89. So when I do that, now my end of the day balance is $233.54. So how long is it at that balance? Well, it looks like it was only for one day. So now I'm going to add in $233.54 into my sum of balances. All right, so it looks like on December 12th we made another purchase of $75. So I'm going to add that, not over here, I'm adding it to the end of the day balance because this is where my true balance is going to actually be. So I'm going to add another $75 in here, and this is going to give me $300. $8.54. Now let's figure out how many days it's that. So if I do that little subtraction tr trick, 20 minus 12 is 8, but I have to count that first day. So it's actually 9 days that it's at that end of the day balance. So now we'll multiply 308.54 times 9, and that will give me a balance of 2,700. $76.86. All right, now it looks like on December 21st they received a payment of $100. So we're going to subtract that off the end of the day balance. So now the end of the day balance is going to be $208.54 for one day. So I'll add in $208.54. Now it looks like no other transaction happened for the rest of the month, 
So we're going to stay steady with an end of the day balance of $208.54. And if we do a quick calculation here, 31 minus 22 plus that extra day means that it sat there for 10 days. All right, so when I multiply that together, I get $2,085.40. Now, quick check to make sure I have everything in there complete. This is the month of December. Remember that December has 31 days. So I'm going to come over here and check that. So I have 10 plus 1 is 11 plus 9 is 20 plus 1 is 21 plus 10 is 31. So that means that I found everything and I multiplied the correct number. That just double checks my math. All right, now we're going to take the sum of our balances for all of these days and we're going to add those together. That's going to give me a total of $7,060.84. So now I can take and calculate my average daily balance. So it takes a little bit of prep work to figure this out. So our average daily balance is the sum of all of our days, and we're going to divide that by 31. So that gives me about $227.77 is my average daily balance. You can see that it's not just on the unpaid portions, it's on your average daily balance. So now let's calculate the finance charge. So this will look like yesterday's, except I'm not doing it on the unpaid. So we're going to take that average daily balance, $227.77, and multiply it by a rate of 2%. And that's going to find us a finance charge of $4.56. Now we're ready to find our new balance. So our new balance is going to start with our end of the day balance or our, where we started last at the, at the beginning of the month. We're going to add in our purchases. We're going to subtract out our payments. Now, this is where we should end up, but just this is just as a little double check. $57.89 we're adding. We're adding $75. We're subtracting $100. Again, this is where we should end up when we do all of that. And then the last thing I'm going to do is add on that finance charge of $4.56. So our new balance will simply be $213.10. Okay, look at Google Classroom for your assignment. I hope you have a wonderful day.